Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we are bringing you a Kickstarter preview of a game called Life of Ordinary People, also known as Loop. So this is a game that, like I said, is coming up on Kickstarter very soon. You can find the exact date, which is, well actually I'll tell you right now, April 2nd. So this video will be going up either the day before or the day of the launch. So you can find the link in the description below to get over to the Kickstarter. Uh, before we get down to the game topper and I really show you what's going on with this game, I do want to mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a great website where you can buy, sell, and trade games. They have a great selection of games to choose from if you're just looking to build out your collection, get more games into that collection, and 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 just build it out. Well, Board Game Co. can absolutely help you with that. Alex over there at Board Game Co. is always keeping his uh, finger on the pulse of the community and knows you know what the new hotness is going to be, what he should be pulling off a of Kickstarter, what he should be you know acquiring out there in the community. And one of the ways he does that is by buying games from uh, used games from people. He will uh, take games right off your hands and give you money for it. If you go to the website, you can see a real easy to use system for selling games to Board Game Co. And in kind of that same vein, they have a really easy system to use for trading games with them. If you have a Board Game Geek account and you've set up the trade list over on Board Game Geek, as many of us have, then you go to Board Game Co., put your Board Game Geek username into their website, and it will then look at your trade list over on Board Game Geek, compare it with the stock at Board Game Co., and build a custom trade list right there on their website. It's very fast, very easy to use. I have actually traded with them before and had a very positive experience. It all went very quickly, very streamlined. I uh, really, really enjoyed it. I recommend that you go check it out as well. If you click on the link in the description below, then they will know I sent you over there. Board Game Co. makes it easy to buy, sell, and trade your way into a better collection. Okay, let's get down to the game topper, and I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about uh, uh, Loop and how it works, give you some thoughts on it, and then we'll come back up top for my final thoughts on Loop. Okay, so what we've got here is the main player area. So each player is going to have a setup similar to this. And this isn't exactly, this isn't the beginning setup. This is kind of like if, if you've been uh, into the game for, for a little bit at this point, um, you know, maybe halfway through a game. So let's take a look at this. So over here, we've got completed goals, okay? And what, and this goal would have required, uh, the, these symbols right here are what the goal needs to be completed. And these symbols kind of represent community. These books represent knowledge. And, uh, and you can see, these activities all have symbols at the top. And so this person would have had, um, let's see, we've got uh, community, knowledge, we've got one knowledge there. So we need one more community. So maybe uh, to com have completed this goal, they would have had a uh, setup kind of like this, where they did game uh, games as part of one of their activities, farming and do it yourself. And so they would have gotten two happiness by completing collective knowledge. All right. And, and you can see how, the, the things where you get these symbols, gaming, farming, do it yourself, that makes sense for collective knowledge, right? And then, you know, this one right here also, there's they'd have three books, so they could have completed just regular knowledge as well, uh, which also makes sense with that, uh, with that set of uh, um, symbols and a set of activities. But let's look at environmental awareness, okay? Well, they've got two knowledge, but they don't have the stuff for the environment. And so maybe instead, uh, let's see, let's take gaming away, put the food bank back out here. Uh, okay, well now they're one closer, but let's maybe take uh, uh, do it yourself away. And so maybe this was the setup that you need for environmental awareness. All right, so you've got food bank, you've got farming, you've got hiking. Uh, so that gives you the two knowledge and then the two uh, nature as well. And then you could complete environmental awareness. All right. Now, every time you complete one of these, you're gaining happiness. All right. Because activities in our lives really help us to kind of get some, uh, some 
uh, sense of accomplishment and everything as you're doing those. And then when you complete a goal, you get whatever happiness at the bottom. So environmental awareness will give you two happiness. Knowledge gives you one. Collective knowledge gives you two. And during the game, you're always going to have, you're going to start with three goals. And that's, those are your goals for the game. So maybe you completed all those and, and this is your happiness tracker. So as you're moving up, you know, or as you complete things, you move up the tracker. All right. Well, so how do you complete these, right? Well, let's say you had this plastic material as well. Okay. So the materials that you have, you keep up here. So you've got a level two utility and a level one plastic. And let's say that you wanted to complete beach clean, right? Uh, so be, this normally is out on the, on the central board, which I'll show you the central board here in just a minute, but you would knock utility down one because you can see beach clean has the yellow there and then plastic is already at one so plastic actually ends up in your landfill but now you've completed beach clean and since you already have three activities out here you'd have to replace one so you know you'd take this one and it would get discarded and beach clean would take its place so what else do we have here on the in the player board area? So like I said, your materials are kept up here. This is your happiness. You know, oh, also when you did beach clean, you would have popped that up one. Okay. Now let's talk about this happiness track for a second. You see it's at three distinct sections. Every time you cross over into a section, you're going to draw an event card. That event card is just going to stay next to your board until the end of your turn. At the end of your turn, you'll flip it over and you'll resolve it. So in this case, you have a continuous event. This is going to stay in play until another continuous event gets drawn and this affects everybody uh players player loses one or excuse me it doesn't affect everybody this, this affects the player that drew it um it only affects them during their active turn and but it is going to stay in play until they draw another continuous event uh player in this case player loses one money per material sent to his landfill so so this is you know this would be in play here and every time you sent something to the landfill you got to spend another another money another, uh, another coin um, and then if you can't pay that, you have to get a credit card to pay it. So uh, now what's really cool is down here at the bottom of these, there is all this thematic explanation for what, for why this even makes sense thematically. So that's really cool. I mean, every single one of these events has this a paragraph of text at the bottom, which is pretty neat. So down here, any credit cards that you have, you start off with zero credit cards, but every time you get a credit card, you got to put it down here. And so the credit card gives you four for money when you first get it as well as one material but then every turn you got to pay at least one you could pay up to two on it until you've paid five back so it gives you four plus a material but you got to pay five back every time you get one of these uh, you can use credit cards to pay credit cards you can only take one credit card out per turn but you can use credit cards to pay credit cards and that can really start to stack up if you if you watch my gameplay you'll see how quickly these can start to stack up if you're not careful um, this is your landfill at the end of the game. If you have, you know, a lot in your landfill, you're going to start losing points. Uh, so that's something you want to watch out for, find ways to mitigate that. Uh, and then you've got, you know, your money that you keep here and, and that you're spending. And I found you don't hold on to money very long in the game. So your career, which is the thing that's going to give you your your individuality in the game uh, compared to other players. Now, and keep in mind, in the base game, in, in the basic game, I should say, in turn, it's what you play as. But after you've played the basic game once, you can immediately go to the to the full game. And really, a lot of people probably can go to the full game right away. And they're using career or regular careers instead of being an intern. So every career is going to have a different starting setup. This guy started with one level one material. And then for him, when he works, he gets six coins, but minus two happiness. All right. But then he also has a special ability. In this case, once per turn, he adds one quality to the uh, to your or other players non-utility material. So if you're playing uh, uh, with him in a uh, com competitive game, you know maybe you make a deal with other players to uh, to give them a little bit better quality on one of their materials or something. Because you can make deals and stuff. They're not binding, but you can make deals. And then there's all kinds of other of other careers here. We've got nurse. Uh, waitress. I mean, there's so many here. Soldier, investor, office lady. I think this is maybe maybe a little bit of a translation thing. I think probably businesswoman is the phrase they're looking for here, but it came out as office lady. Uh, we'll see if that sticks around. Uh, scientist, lawyer, uh, 
office officer officer again keep in mind prototype so uh, there's some spelling stuff everything that likely you will end up getting adjusted banker artist chef I mean look at these freelancer all these have different abilities different starting setups different uh, um, uh, incomes uh, and look at this freelancer um, you can decide you can decide uh, plus two money and you're not going to lose any happiness. But then if you give four money, one happiness. But you could earn up to seven money and lose two happiness. So that's pretty interesting. Freedom for the special ability. Once per turn, may discard one favor and draw a new one. All right. Then we've got Craftsman. And so, oh, by the way, these X's at the top. These are how difficult this particular one is to use. So two X's uh, is the medium difficulty. Those earlier ones were one X. Now we're getting into some three X's. You got Homemaker politician, scholar, scavenger, salesman, and tycoon. Let's look at this tycoon real quick. So he starts with two money and one rep, which we haven't talked about the rep yet. We'll do that in a second. Um, work times two. I guess that means he can do this. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means. I have, there, there are explanations for each of these in the rule book. Minus one happiness. Leverage. Win work, oh, here we go. win work double your money and lose one extra happiness per credit card owned. Oh, that's interesting. So then your rep, you, the rep is gained by uh, accepting favors. And basically, uh, as you gain rep, you can have up to two rep at a time. And then you can use the rep. If you use it when you're working, you use one rep to get an additional money. Uh, when you're buying something, uh, which is that's how you gain material, is through taking the buy action. There's three actions, by the way. Work, buy, consume. Uh, working is how you gain money. Uh, buying is how you gain material. Consuming is how you use material to get activities. Uh, so when you buy minus one rep to get an additional quality added to the material that you're buying, uh, you can consume and get minus two or, or use both of your rep like that. Uh, and you'll get plus one happiness in that case. Uh, or you can use also use one rep to reject any one favor. And then here's the main player board here or, or the main um uh, common area board, I guess. Uh, this is where you've got your your buy, work, and consume kind of laid out here in a very easy to to recognize order. All right, but let's work from top to bottom. So, activity discard pile. This is where anytime you replace an activity on your board or discard an activity for any reason, it'll go there. Very easy. Here you've got your favor deck. This is where uh, let's see. There are there are five favors in the game. Uh, recycle, which lets you take material from another player's landfill and, and end up using it. You've got resell, where you can sell the material that you've got in currently in your player area back to the bottom of the material deck and get paid for it. Uh, the share lets you use material. Oh, wait, no. Uh, in the solo game, you use material here, but normally you use uh, material, one quality of, a play, of another player's material for you to consume, okay? And you can see that when players accept these favors, they gain reputation, all right? But, so this one lets you uh, use someone else's material instead of your own, which can help reduce waste in your landfill. All right, here you've got barter, where you can exchange one material with a player having the same quality or less. A uh, good way to kind of get something that you need when you uh, are not able to buy it at the time. And then acquire lets you actually take one material from a player and pay that player equal to its quality. So another way to acquire material without getting it uh, directly from here. Now, these are all slightly adjusted in the solo game, uh, and it, you end up interacting with this board more using these as opposed to another player, since there isn't another player. Uh, when you uh, use a favor, or when a favor is done, it's discarded up here, okay? Here are the events. Um, and just to give you an idea of some of these events, uh, I showed you the landfill tax already. Look at this, the, the second semi mid-season sales, buy one material with a 50% discount. So this is a continuous event as well. Red gown, another continuous event, buy with quality no less than your current highest material. Um, let's see here, there's, here's, here's a, an immediate event right here, hidden clause, move one money from each credit card to your work area. Now here's another one, status climb, lose one happiness if there's a player with less happiness 
or if there's a player with less happiness that has more money than you. Again, keep in mind prototypes. So they're still still working out some of the um, uh, grammar stuff here and everything. But these are events, and when an event is done, it's discarded here. All right. So here are your your activity area. These are all the available activity, activities currently. Uh, every time one is taken. All right. At the end of that player's turn, it will be replaced just like that. OK, uh, credit cards are always available. A player can take one credit card out uh, during their turn if they want, and uh, they'll get four money and one material for doing so. But then they have to immediately start paying the credit card off. One or two money per turn has to go on the credit card. Uh, and there's no limit to the number of credit cards you can have, but you can only take one per turn. But you can use credit cards to pay credit cards, and that can get you into a dangerous cycle real fast. Uh, and then over here for the buy section, you see these are the five different types of material, utility, plastic, metal, glass, food. And as these are taken, they'll be replaced. When this deck runs out, that's the end of the game. Uh, the, that round finishes, and then the game is over. Uh, the other way that the game can, run, can end is if somebody makes it to the top of that happiness track we were looking at earlier. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much a quick little rundown of everything. Let's go back up to the top and I'll give you some final thoughts. So there you go. That was Loop. Now, this game uh, really kind of surprised me. When I initially saw it, I'll be honest, I, I wasn't too uh, enamored with, with what was going on. When I initially saw it, uh, I should say the, the photographs online and everything. And then I started reading into it and really kind of looking at it. And the artworks, the very minimalist artwork started to really grow on me. And, you know, little details that I like, you know, and this is speaking purely from an aesthetic point of view, little details that I really like are with, you know, the material cards, they could have easily had a single symbol for food. But instead, every, uh, every different food card has a different uh, symbol for food on it, it has a different... Um, you know, drawing different piece of artwork to represent food. Every, everyone for glass, you know, this is a light bulb, but there's another one that's a martini glass. There's another one that's a, a bottle, you know. And so I thought that that's a nice little touch. It really shows that they're, they're really kind of paying attention to detail there, I think. And, I, you know, that's just something I like. And then with the activities, there's lots of cool different activities in here that, again, you know, it, it essentially represents a mechanical uh, thing in the game you know it represents it, it didn't have to be beach clean it could be whatever that would involve plastic and uh, utility but uh, I like all the different little uh, activities that they have in here it really helps sell the theme of you know trying to find stuff to uh, you know activities and, and, and meaning in a person's life. I think that's really, really cool. I, I love the fact that when you do the work, uh, the work action, you earn money, but you also lose a little bit of happiness because, you know, which is the case for most people, even if you've got a job you like, it's not the primary thing you'd prefer to be doing, you know, throughout the you, you have other things that are going to bring you happiness besides your work. You might be lucky enough to work at a job that you enjoy, but it's still not the primary thing that's going to bring you happiness. And so a little thematic touch like that is is something that always is fantastic. Uh, the favor cards, I think, are cool because they've that's where a lot of the strategy starts coming in with being able to do multiple things on your turn, you know, because normally you can only do one action, but then using the favor cards, you know, uh, for one thing, you know, like with the share uh, the share action here, you're able to uh, use less of your own material, which means less is going to end up in your landfill. And so then you're able to, you know, hopefully keep your score up towards the end of the game. Uh, let's see. And, you know, with this with this recycle one, you know, maybe you can't find what you need here in the, the buy section. And so, you know, recycling, you're going to end up helping your, your, uh, uh, the other players out. And if you're playing competitively, recycling might be something that you're really going to want to, you know, consider whether or not it's worth doing because, you know, depending on what other scores are compared to yours, but then in the, co in the cooperative game, you know, recycling actually, 
could be a really effective tool for helping everyone out. Uh, let's see. We also have uh, acquire is one of my favorites because you know if you're on a turn where you are going to consume, but you want one more material in order to uh, may, maybe that one more material will let you consume three things instead of just one, then you play the acquire card at the beginning of that turn. Get that. You know, get whatever material it is you need at the at the quality level that you need it, and then you can take the consume action. So, so by by doing this, it makes a you know a future action or an action later on that turn even that much more effective. And there's just so many. What do we have? Oh, uh, we also had the barter and the resell. Uh, you know, and having this barter action to be able to trade out with other players can be very useful either as a way to, you know, because people can't, people aren't always able to reject these favors. So if you're able to do it to a player that, that doesn't have the ability to reject it at the time, and then uh, you, you can maybe hamper their, what they're trying to do by taking an item that they need. On the other hand, maybe you make a deal with a player and you each have something the other one needs and you switch you know, by using the barter action, uh, and and then resell is another great way of keeping things out of your your landfill. So there's lots of great uh, options as far as as far as strategizing how to make the most out of your turn. You know, and then you have these events that not only are the events interesting in what they do and kind of what they set up. You know, you got one here where you cannot buy. Um, if you own a credit card, it's called bad debt, uh, and and that's a continuous uh, event that lasts until another continuous event gets picked. But then also you have combustion energy, which is a, an immediate event. Players with the, with the least happiness or shuffle all non utility material from their landfill back into the material deck. You know, so um, and, and then I love that they for I mean look at how many events there are, right? So. You've got this huge event deck, and for every single one of them, they have a thematic explanation at the bottom. That's really cool. So there's so much detail as far as that goes. But then as far as the gameplay itself, I really love this kind of collecting the right sets of stuff that you need and then making the decision, well, do I purchase it at, at quality one or do I purchase it all the way up at quality four or somewhere in between? Um, that way I get more use out of it. And also that way, you know, if I'm purchasing it at quality one, then every time I use it, I'm going to end up with something in my landfill. So sometimes you want to purchase at a higher quality just to prevent that from happening. Because, uh, you know, obviously because the landfill is negative points at the end of the game. And so you're being mindful of how much waste you're creating. You're, you're, trying to decide, you know, what 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 activities are you going to be going after to try to meet your goals and even the goals themselves are so thematically cool. Uh, you know, it's just there there's there's so much so many interesting decisions and in the game that's it's only a I mean, I think 45 minutes Probably if you get, when, with me playing solo, I'm pretty sure in one or two more games, I'll easily be down to a 30 minute game. Uh, once I, you know, that way when I have it really clicking really fast. But with more players, I don't see any reason why this game would ever last longer than an hour. As long as, you know, people kind of understand the game and are, and are moving along. Obviously when you're first learning, it's a little bit different. And in that game that's an hour or less, I feel like there's a lot of great choices in here, a lot of great decisions to be made. Um, you know, if you watch my gameplay, the reputation was something that didn't really get used because in the solo game, it's not it's not something that, that really is a factor for the most part. But reputation, which is linked to the favors, reputation can really add even more of a uh, strategic element to the game. And it's just... There's so much here that I think you might miss on your first glance. And once you start playing it, you start seeing what those decisions are and how to uh, really make the most of your turn using the favors, how to plan out a turn so that, you know, when you're the first time I played, 
you know, you're, you're able to buy up to three material when you take the buy action. You're able to consume and, and complete up to three activities when you take the consume action. And I would almost always only be doing one at a time. And as you play more and figure out how to set up a turn where you can complete three activities at once, uh, where, where you can purchase three materials, not at quality one, but at better quality all at the same time, what the proper use for the credit cards is, how you can use those in an intelligent way to further your goals that without ending up crippling yourself with credit card debt later in the game. Had a lot of lot of fun with Life of Ordinary People. This is coming to Kickstarter April 2nd. I believe this preview probably is going up either late the night before or on April 2nd. Get over to that Kickstarter, check it out. Links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out my uh, gameplay for a life of ordinary people and about a week into the Kickstarter my instructional video for a life of ordinary people will be coming up as well and until next time if you're bored online bored offline